to Cannon Fodder TV, but more importantly, welcome to the Voice of Reason. <laughs> Another week of Arsenal is in the books, and three points added to the board. This week was a crucial week as far as top four is concerned. And I feel like Nostradamus in this bitch because... The whole time I've been saying we are going to beat Man United. And all week I've had United fans in my mentions. Oh, Pogba's going to come up to the Emirates. Oh, Martial's coming. Oh, Lukaku's coming. Oh, Rashford's coming. And this and that and the other, right? Everything that you can imagine that United fans could throw at me, they've done. Okay? Yet... They didn't take into account how good our home form is. Tottenham slapped them up. Chelsea slapped them up. Liverpool draw. Fair enough. And now you can add United to the list of casualties at the Emirates. The only team that has beaten us at the Emirates is Manchester City. And that says a lot. Our home form is among the best in the league. And I firmly believe that if we can sort out our away form and sure up our defence, we could challenge for the title. But all that depends on Unai Emery getting the players he wants and the club spending money. Because... That's only going to improve with those two instances, okay? That's the only way that's improving. As far as the game goes, I wasn't particularly worried. When I seen the lineup, right, I was one of the few that was like, you know what? Fantastic team selection. Fantastic. Got no problem with it at all. No problem with it. However, there was a few that were concerned about Jaka and Ramsey in midfield. And those concerns weren't entirely unvalid. However, Jaka and Ramsey proved those people wrong. Jaka was dictating things from deep and Ramsey was absolutely everywhere. Those two seem to have a very good understanding between the two. And with Torea being suspended, I would like to see us go with that midfield from now on. I'm not a big fan of, you know, sticking with the same formation or lineup, but when it comes to the midfield, Jaka and Ramsey is probably our best option. So I would like to see us go with that from now until the end of the season. Unless tactically it calls for it to be changed. It's the only exception. The three centre backs. Koscielny, Socrates, and Monreal. My concern about Koscielny has always been, is it a stretch too far? However, you can't fault him. You can't fault Socrates and you can't fault Monreal. If we play back three, that's our best back three going. Like, not even joking. Monreal may be coming to the end of it, but... He's still a competent defender. He really is. Socrates, you don't need to say much. We all know that this guy's a warrior. And Koscielny, while he's not what people would call an elite defender, he's a competent defender because he's always been good at recovering. So he's at least competent. 
I was very happy about Mustafi not being included. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we keep a clean sheet and Mustafi is nowhere near the side. Don't think that's a coincidence at all. As far as the first half goes, we started off really well. One thing I've always said about this team is, are the commitment levels there? Because we've seen many times this season when they haven't been. However, on Sunday, the commitment levels were there from minute one. And I'm very happy to say that because I've gone on about mentality numerous times. I've gone on about commitment levels so many times. I've questioned the commitment of this team. And for them to do what they did on Sunday makes me very happy. Jaka's goal. I've seen a lot of people come, like, I've seen people blame De Gea for the goal. But in reality, if you watch it back, Matic is more at fault because he's the one that doesn't close down the space. And as a defensive midfielder, that's your Bren Butter. So if I was a United fan, I'd be asking questions of Matic. But the goal itself, great strike from Jaka, fantastic. Both Jaka and Rams, they played well. Like I said earlier, they've got a great understanding between the two of them. And again, it's things were just going well for us on the day. They really were. But for me, what was more important, and to be honest, you can make a, a case for the whole starting 11 to be man of the match. Honestly, you could. The wingbacks were immensely important because what they did they provided another attacking outlet for the midfield to lay it off to instead of laying it off to the front three don't get me wrong Ozo, Aubameyang and Lacazette did amazing but the wing backs they were unsung heroes in my opinion Maitland Niles was great in an attacking sense and defensively. Kalasinac was getting down that side a lot and getting a lot of joy. I've always had question marks over Kalasinac defensively, but on Sunday he did very good. And what the wingbacks did, which to be honest, it might have been natural to them I don't know but with them getting up and down it allowed Ozil, Lacazette and Aubameyang to do their thing but Man United to me they just lacked that drive I, I, I don't know it's not it was a different Man United than we're used to seeing in a sense especially over the last few weeks but with me, when it comes to Solskjaer, right, I've always had this thought that is that sustainable? Because now we're going to see what kind of manager Solskjaer is. You can look at the PSG game and think, oh, but you responded after that. Well, yeah, but that was in Europe where, let's be honest, not many sides in the league are of that level. So, you can't really say that, oh, they responded to that. The next game they play. That that will define the manager that Solskjaer is. Is he a manager that will respond after a defeat? Or will the team go in their shells again? I don't know. I don't know. Only time will tell. But... The second half came along and even after Man United switched to a back three in the first half, they were getting a lot of joy by using that. But then they switched to a back four again, which didn't work in the, in the first half. So I don't know why it would work in the second. 
Man United, they just... I wasn't worried. There was never a point in the game where I thought, you know what, Man United could score here. There was never a point in the game where I thought, yeah, we're in trouble. N not a moment in the game, I didn't think that. But the game turned on its head when we got a penalty when Fred pushed down like, or sh I should say, I'm not going to say pushed down, he kind of, Lacazette went down rather soft, if I'm honest. But, in the modern game, minimal contact equals a penalty. And, I'm not being biased, I've watched it back. To me, it's soft, but it's a penalty. So, make of that what you will. And Aubameyang, after he missed his penalty against Tottenham and was suffering from a lack of confidence after that to score the penalty to win us the game, I'm happy for him. I really am happy for him. Ultimately, we won the game 2-0 and that puts top four in our hands. So, it could be... I, I don't know. This could go down to the wire. It really could. And the fact that Chelsea drop points and Tottenham drop points, it makes things very interesting. Tottenham seem to me like they're in free fall. Chelsea, I don't know what's going on with them. One week they'll win a game. The next week they'll struggle to break a side down. I, 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 I do not know. I don't know what's going on with them. If I had to make a prediction now, and obviously things can change, I'm aware of that, but I would say us and United get top four. Tottenham and Chelsea just don't seem that... They just don't seem like sides that will rally and pick form up. Their Chelsea are very up and down. And if it wasn't for Hazard, they would have lost to Wolves. Tottenham, they just don't seem... I think not signing players is taking its toll on them. I really do think it's taking its toll on them. So, we'll see how that works out. But as far as the guy who invaded the pitch goes, I'm going to keep that brief. I'm going to keep that brief. He's a fucking idiot. Basically putting a black mark on what should have been a great day for Arsenal fans. So cheers for that, really. And when you've got things happening like Jack Grealish getting punched in the back of the head, and there was another incident in the Hibs Rangers game. I, I can't remember. But it doesn't put us in a good light. It doesn't. So, to me, the fan that did that is a fucking idiot. So, there you go. There you go. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the Voice of Reason. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Leave a like while you're down there. And also be sure to stay tuned to Cannon of Order for all of the content, fan comments, the voice of reason and all that stuff. The bite size, the easy, the easy talk bite sizes, the full length feature version, all that stuff. But until next time, I'll see you guys next week.